Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be discussing my five favorite seasons of Super Sentai. I'll have more to say on some seasons more than others. While they are ranked numerically, I would say that most of them are neck and neck. The number is pretty superfluous, aside from number one, which is actually my favorite season. I'll also be going into a little bit of spoilers. I'll try to keep as little spoilers as possible and try to be as vague as possible. But just so you know, I'll be covering slight spoilers. Coming in at number 5 is Samurai Sentai Shinkenger, and this is just a great season. This might be one of the seasons that's carried the most by its characters, because the plot isn't great uh, until the finale arc. And even then, it could have probably been drawn out a bit longer, but it's still probably one of the best finale arcs in all of Sentai. All of the Shinkengers are pretty likable, and they all grow throughout the season, and by far my favorite is Takaru Shinken Red, especially because nowadays most... Red Rangers are just annoying twerps and having a serious and stoic character who learns to be friends with his teammates of just being dedicated to his cause. It shows great growth, but also the bond he shows is even exemplified when he leaves in the finale arc. And the rest of the Shinkenders are all good. I would say Kotaha is probably the weakest just because she has the least to do. And I feel like Genta is hated a little bit too much and I understand that he can be really annoying sometimes and I didn't really see a need for another comic relief character because we had Ryunosuke but I feel like he still works well with Takeru as he grows closer to his team and also Genta is also pretty funny sometimes and the villains are all right I guess um, they're not good characters but as villains they're pretty good uh, the monsters designs are awesome they're probably the best some of the best i don't even think there's a bad one and as the main villain doko chimatsuri is fine as a character obviously he's not good but as a villain i think he's threatening and even though like most of the season he's just sitting around uh there's at least a story reason for that the best villain is obviously juzo he's probably my favorite villain in all of sentai he's just really intriguing and his death scene is amazing and daiyu is also kind of interesting but not as much as Juzo. And as for the superfluous stuff, the suits are incredible. I really like the black pants. It has probably one of my favorite soundtracks. And also, one of the biggest things is that it made me nostalgic for Power Rangers Samurai, which is crazy because it's a season that, even though it's a season that I grew up with, I was never really fond with it. It was a season that really started to make me not as interested in Power Rangers, so having the season make me look back on that is great. Number four is Bakuyu Sentai Abba Ranger, and this is also another season that I was always curious about because of that episode in Dino Thunder where they watched that Wacker Wilson episode. So I was always wondering, like, what the hell is this crazy, wacky Sentai? And it ended up being, like, one of my favorite seasons. And it is very silly, but also it has, like, every single tone you can think of in Sentai. It's very silly, it can be dramatic, it can be dark. And I think it balances them well. Sometimes it feels kind of out of place, but for the most part, it's done really well. Um, the Ever Rangers themselves aren't incredible. Yoga is probably the best because of his relationship with Mai. Uh, the other two core team members are not that memorable, but Asuka is the best just because of his interesting backstory and his connection to the villains. And the villains also aren't that great. I really don't like the motivation of resurrecting the big bad guy although always the problem with that is that they're just resurrected in the final episode and then they just get killed in the final episode and that's exactly what happens with Desma Zoria. Uh, John is basically just Maria from Jetman although Michaela and Voth are entertaining sometimes but obviously the villains are heavily carried by Opera Killer he's one of the Bastille Rangers in the whole season and would have been if not for Heracles he's just the fact that there's no nuance to him he's just evil is great, especially because nowadays all evil rangers are just getting redeemed and while Abare Killer did get redeemed, he only fought with the team once and then he had to sacrifice himself. So I, I'm fine with that. And then I also like Yatsudenwani, he's probably my favorite side villain. He doesn't do anything of note, but he's just funny. And also the Bakuyu are kind of useless, like aside from Top Galer and Stego Slidon, I don't really see a reason for them. They're basically just cheerleaders. And for the suits, the suits are really cool, especially Abare Black and Abare Killer. And the season's music has awesome insert themes. I know Abare Black's theme and the opening theme. Opening theme is one of my favorites. 
I know it might have been a little harsh on this season, but it's really entertaining and I definitely recommend it for anyone who wants to watch it. Number three is Avatar Sentai Dawn Brothers, and there might be a little bit of recency bias for this one because this finished last year and it finished really strong, and it just really meant like it was a huge deal because of, of how different it was. Because Zenkaiger, while it looked different, it ended up just being very generic by the number of Sentai, so Dawn Brothers came in and was completely different than anything I'd ever seen. It's just Absolutely crazy, absurd, especially near the end. It also has interesting lore, best character interactions, basically what the entire season is built on. Characters are great. Uh, I love Taro. He's basically like this special boy character. Well, instead of that being his most powerful attribute, it's his downfall because he can't get any friends because of how weird he is. And he also has like a similar arc to Takaru from Shinkenji where he just learns to be closer to his team and I really like Haruka she's my favorite yellow ranger she has the best reactions Sarhar is fine he's probably the least interesting of the core team but he's funny Tsubasa is basically the secondary protagonist he doesn't even join the team until like episode 42 and that's just really funny but Kijino is easily the best he's the most interesting character in all of Sentai he's the best pink ranger he shows like he's kind of overprotective of his wife and then he becomes a absolute crazy person and then he's a actual villain on multiple occasions. He's just great. But Jiro is easily the worst. He's just a generic six ranger. He changes near the end, but it's kind of too little too late. There's large stretches where he's not even around and he's just kind of annoying. And Zenkaiser Black is cool. He's I honestly prefer this version of Kaito than the one in Zenkaiger. The Noto are probably the best evil rangers. They're not really evil. They're heroes of their own people. They just have no regard for human life, but although they change throughout the season, so I see their redemption as not like a bad thing, like of Abrae Killer. It's more so a progression of their characters. They have great interactions with the Tom brothers. There's some awesome filler episodes, especially near the end with Dawn Killer and the driving episode. The Home Brothers Come of the Future. There's also some great dramatic moments, especially the best one is Kijino turning Tsubasa into the police. And the ending is pretty sad. But I feel like the biggest problem is just the villains. The Noto are pretty good villains, but there isn't really a main villain. And I feel like this is a problem because the other three Noto that come in near the end should have probably been the main villains, but they just come in too late and they're even replaced for the finale. The Juto are just defeated too early, so they can't really be, but they probably should have been the final boss. And the Hitotsuki are pretty lame monsters of the week, but it's kind of funny that they're like common Rider, like civilians of the week, but like no one seems to care about them. It's pretty funny. And also Don Murasame is kind of a stupid addition. He doesn't really add anything. He's never really explained. And also probably should have just been cut to give more time to Don Drogoku because he really needed it. Another problem is that just the lore is kind of confusing. Well, there's just a lot of unanswered questions like who is Zenkaiser Black, although I'm pretty sure that's a, that's a joke. And then like who is Don Morisame's mother? Things like that. It's just kind of annoying. They were never really answered. And honestly, the CGI for Inu Brother and Kiji Brother weren't that bad. I kind of feel like Kiji Brother should have been a practical suit because they use a lot of practical suit for close-ups, but I, uh, Inu Brother was fine. I was honestly fine with him being CGI. And the mecha honestly looked awesome. Don Onitajin looks amazing. Uh, Don Zenkaio is the first good-looking CGI mecha. And I feel like the only other weird thing is there's some really weird design choices like there are Gokai changes, which aren't even used that much. It's kind of weird. And then the altar forms, but I feel like this is just marketing. Also, the Hitotsuki are based off of past seasons, which I feel like should have just been used for Senkaiger. It's kind of weird. But I feel like all that can be forgiven because the season is just incredible. Dawn Brothers is this crazy lightning in a bottle Sentai. I just feel like it could never be replicated. Number two is Russia Sentai Tokyujer, and this is another season that was always intriguing to me because it got passed over for adaptation here in the West, so I was also wondering what the season was about, and then when the Tokyujers first appeared in 
Goldbusters versus Cure Uger. I really was not looking forward to that. They did not give a good impression, but uh, and then their season started and I didn't really care. And then, but by the end, this is one of my favorite seasons of all time. And honestly, probably could have been number one easily. It's just so wholesome and heartwarming. The talk users are all likable. Uh, I like them all equally. Uh, Kagura can be kind of annoying, but I feel like it's fine. And then the twist that they're children is, it's a good mystery because there are clues spread around, although with Kagura, it's pretty obvious. And I feel like it probably should have been not revealed as soon because not much is done with it outside of the final seven episodes. So probably should have been revealed later, but at that point, it was pretty obvious. Akira is the best sex ranger in all of Sentai. He's cool, but he's also funny. And it's not just because he's a crazy goofball like Genta from Shingenji or a guy from Gokaijer. His coolness is made into comedy, kind of like Jay from Go Busters. And also he has an arc where he learns to value his life. And the villains are all right. I like how all the commanders have their own agenda. And Z is a pretty good idea for a villain like a king of darkness who likes the light that's just a pretty good idea but i feel like not much is done with this he's kind of just a generic villain and i like all the villain designs all of them are pretty good z's monster form baron nero general schwartz and the shadow kaijin are my favorite monsters of the week their designs are really creepy jack in the box shadow chain shadow syringe shadow those are some of my favorites. But the ranger suits are absolutely terrible. I get what they were going for. I know why they look the way they do for the transfer gimmick, but there's just too underdesigned. There's nothing to them. I get they have their simplistic charm, but I, I really don't like them. And while I don't really like the transfer gimmick, to their credit, it's used in a creative way on multiple occasions. And the mecha are also pretty bad. Like Diesel is the only one that looks cool. And Taki Rainbow was really ugly, but it's still really cool. There's also some pretty cool action scenes, like there's a fight in the train in episode 2. There's an indoor fight scene in episode 43 with the mecha. That's really cool. And the soundtrack is also awesome. The opening theme is my absolute favorite. The finale arc is easily the best in all of Sentai. Even its slight rehash of Time Ranger, the ending made me cry during my first watch through. No other season has even gone close to that same reaction. And uh, this is just a season that's so wholesome, it's so heartwarming. Definitely recommend it. Could have easily been number one. Coming in at number one to absolutely no one's surprise is Kaizoku Sentai Go Kaiger. Probably for most because it was my most anticipated season. Ever since I know it existed, I was always hyping it up, hyping it up until I finally got around to watching it. And then it even exceeded my high expectations so it has the cool suits has great music top five cast and i just like the arc that the go kaijus go on it's the perfect setup for an anniversary season they start up as vagabonds who are only interested in getting earth's treasure but by the end they realize uh their fate as the 35th sentai and actually care for the earth. I like all the Gokaijers, probably equally. Uh, I like how they all have a connection to the Zanyak in some way. Uh, Captain Marvelous is my favorite red of all time, mostly because of his attitude and charisma. He's like a roguelike character, but at the same time, he's still a great leader for the team. And I like all the other ones well enough. I don't really have much to say about them, but they're all great. And I thought Guy was going to be really annoying, and he he is annoying sometimes, but I feel like having a Sentai fanboy as one of the characters is pretty funny. And I ended up liking him well enough by the end. And I thought all the fan service episodes were done well and they felt earned. The weakest part of the season is probably the villains. Like, the Zaniac are really generic. They don't really have much redeeming qualities. Although some of the monsters of the week are pretty memorable and funny. Wars Gill as much hate as he gets, even though he's not a good villain, even though he's not a good character. He at least has a personality unlike basically any of the Zanyak commanders. And Basco is probably the only good villain. He probably should have just been the main villain. And the final two episodes with Basco is probably the best two-parter in all of Sentai. And I also like that not all the episodes were anniversary based. And I guess also the mecha aren't that great. Godujin is cool, but Gokeo in all its forms aren't that great. I don't like the mecha fights in the season. I already don't really like mecha fights in general, but these ones are 
really boring, but the suits are awesome. I like how they reference Go Ranger in a very subtle way. That's cool. But I feel like the worst part about this season is that it's so good that the expectation for all anniversary seasons after this is that they're at this level and they really shouldn't be. Nothing is going to be as good as this. So yeah, Go Kaiju is number one. It's awesome. I highly recommend it. If you're going to watch a single season of Sentai, I would say this is the one. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, sorry if you didn't really like Don Brothers, I ended up talking more about that than I probably expected. But that season just has so much to talk about. But yeah, I appreciate um, anyone who watches this. Uh, King Oger is ending next week, so I'll probably make a video related to King Oger uh, after the finale. So stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, uh, feedback is always appreciated. Have a great day.